Welcome into Prep Picks. Heather Williams alongside Casey Getz and Steve Wilmoth of ESPN Tri-Cities and TriCitiesports.com. Well, we all win the perfect 6-0 and oh this week. Let's see if some of these matchups can shake things up a little bit. Let's start in Tennessee and an intriguing matchup in Class 1A between North Green and Cloudland. Casey, you are up first. Yeah, North Green beating Unica last week. Cloudland losing a close one to Cosby. So you figure Cosby kind of has the inside track now for the, the region championship. I don't see Cloudland losing again. I guess really you could say a home playoff game on the line in this one. I'll take the Highlanders to get the win, though. Yeah, Highlanders for the first time in 10 years coming off a region loss. 35 games in a row. That streak was snapped last week by Cosby. It was Casey Mitch in line to win their first ever region championship. North Green could be the same and set up that game next week with the win at Orr Field over the Highlanders. I just think Cloudland is going to bounce back and get it done. They've just been in this position. They've not played a road playoff game to open the playoffs since 2010. I don't think they'll do that this year either. Oh, I love the fact that I'm going to get to shake things up right here on the first pick. <laughs> North Green is probably one of the best teams in the area, just kind of lying underneath the surface that nobody is talking about. They're playing really good football, and all streaks must come to an end, right? I mean, yeah. unless you're the Kansas City Chiefs and we just keep winning forever. <laughs> is that a coincidence you're in red today? Uh, ne never. <laughs> no, no, okay. Never. Um, but I am going to pick North Green just to mix things up a little bit. All right, a non-region matchup in Class 5A. David Crockett and Class 6A Dobbins Bennett. Steve, you'll have the radio call for this one, so I'll give you first crack at the picks. You know, these non-region games the week before the big regular season ending, I don't know if they just really fit in anybody's schedule. If you're Crockett, you're coming off two straight region losses. Now you got to go up against a Class 6A power in Dobbins Bennett. The Indians coming off some big wins, including the win over William Blunt. Now you got to be careful you don't misstep here against Class 5A David Crockett. Remember last year, this game was almost a misstep for the Indians, but it's senior night at J. Fred. I think the focus will be there. The Dobbins Bennett ground attack, really good last week, 300 yards against William Blunt. I think he'll do the same this week against the Pioneers. It's amazing what a couple weeks can make a change. David Crockett going to the Tennessee High game had a chance to win the region, controlled their destiny. They lose to Tennessee High. They lose to Morristown West. Now they have no chance at a home playoff game unless they knock off Sevier County next week, who's ranked top two or three in the state. So for David Crockett, it's about what ills can you correct? But again, they have Dobbins Bennett and Sevier County in the last two games, so they're looking at realistically having a four-game losing streak going into the playoffs as the number four seed. I think it's a tough spot. I think Dobbins Bennett wins handily. Yeah, I think this is going to be a tough game for the reasons you guys have just laid out for Crockett. What they need to do, in my opinion, is just play within themselves, get better within their own game, just so they feel better about the way they're playing going into the playoffs. It's going to be a tough road for them. I like uh, DB as well. And the first of two Friday Night Rivals games this week. Double your Casey pleasure this week. This one is the one that's actually on Friday, the battle for Hawkins County Cherokee and Volunteer. Casey, you're going to be on the call, but we're going to let you go first in this one. All righty, yes. Uh, battle of Hawkins County. We did this game on Rivals five years ago. It was the first time I'd been to this rivalry. It was fantastic. Doesn't matter what the records are. This year, Cherokee's having their best season, potentially could be their best regular season in 20 years. 2004, they went 8-2. and two. Unfortunately, they lost the game because of the weather, so the best they could do is 7-2 and two in the regular season. But what Coach Hensley has done down there, his fourth season as head coach, really impressed with that. The guys have bought in. He said when they were nothing, they were at the bottom, they stuck with him. Now they're 5-2. and two. They're clinch a playoff spot on the road because of Elizabethan and Greenville. But I think Cherokee is going to win this one. I, I feel bad for Volunteer. You know, they don't have a win this year. They didn't win a game last year. A very young team. Maybe next week they play Granger. They can get their first win of the season, but I don't think it's this week. Yeah. Coach Angeli's first two years in Rogersville, the Chiefs won two games both years. So to your point about how he has turned that program around for sure. Cherokee, this is the 45th meeting between these two teams. Cherokee's won 35 of the first 44. The Cherokee offense averages 37 points per game against teams not named Greenville and Elizabethan. Volunteers defense costs up about 35 a game or 40 a game, at least 35 in every game, but one Landon Jefferson company, that offense for Cherokee, very impressive. They're going to wrap up the third seed out of Region 1-4A this week. I will say this about Volunteer. You can see the improvement. They are staying in games until late, and then the depth and the experience games are getting away from them late, to your point about how many points are giving up per game. There has been 
huge improvement. They're just not there yet. In a couple of years, I think this could be a pretty good rivalry, but I'm going to go with the group and pick Cherokee in this one as well. A big cross-state rivalry between teams having outstanding seasons. Johnson County visiting Holston. Steve, you get first crack on this one. Uh, the big news out of Mountain City, obviously, Juan Mejia going down last week, but still Johnson County able to get the big win against Gatlinburg Pittman. How do they react? going to Holston, the first trip to Damascus for Johnson County since 1987. It's been quite a while since they've played Holston. He's talking about historic season. Johnson County in line for its ninth win this Friday, only six times in Johnson County football history dating back to 1927 have the Longhorns won as many as nine games in a regular season. I think quarterback Jay Stout and company can step up and get it done on the road even without Mejia. Really hate to see him go down. He was having a magical season for the Longhorns. Yeah, he really was. You wonder what does this do for them come playoff time? Because if they had him, you think they may have been able to get through until they saw Alcoa in the third round now. Does that maybe impact them in rounds one or two? I guess we'll have to see. But Hayden Sinclair stepping in for Holston at quarterback, our player of the week. I uh, talked to Cole Johnson. And, and, you know, so exciting to see what they can do. They're third currently in the 1D uh, region, 1D power points is Holston, but I think the size of Johnson County will still be enough. That defense, as you mentioned, Steve, they still only give up seven points to GP. Yeah. So I think Johnson County's toughness defense, I think they get a win at Holston. You mentioned what happened to Holston, Hayden Seclair taking off the quarterback. If Johnson County wants to learn how to react, all they have to do is look at their friends from Holston. It's crazy that they've not played in so long, considering how close these two schools are relatively in this area. I think it's going to be a great game, great atmosphere, but I think, as you mentioned, Casey, the size difference between a Class 3A team in Tennessee and a Class 1 team in Virginia, I'll give the edge to the Longhorns as well. Let's go all the way across the state line now for a big one in the Mountain 7 District, Abingdon hosting Ridgeview. Casey, who do you have? This is going to be a fun one. Abingdon coming off their bye week. Ridgeview, you know, they trying to maybe figure things out after they lost to Union a couple weeks ago. I think Abingdon is going to get this win. I, you know, their only loss, I believe, is Tennessee High. And their defense, their physicality, I think, for Abingdon. You know, Ridgeview, they've only had two games that they've been challenged. Virginia High, they won by two touchdowns. And Union, they lost by 24. I think the schedule that Abingdon played has them more prepared. I think the Falcons get this win. You know, Abingdon sets up a big showdown with Union for the Mountain 7 District with the win over uh, Ridgeview this week. These two defenses very, very stout, however. Everybody wants to look at the offenses, but the defenses are fantastic. Abingdon offense gets it done on the ground. Ridgeview more through the air. You look at some common opponents, not much difference there. Power ratings in Virginia, not much difference there. Uh, I just got to go with a team that's at home and relies on the ground game, and I'll take the Falcons. It's interesting you mentioned the defense because I was on the call for that Union and, and Ridgeview game, and it was Rid it was Union's defense that really made a difference. Ridgeview had not seen a defense like that all year. It really confused them. It really frustrated them. If Ridgeview can figure things, some things out on offense and be able to find a little bit more of a running game and a little bit more of a power game against that defense, I think it's going to be a good game. But I'm in agreement with everybody else. I think that uh, Abingdon gets a win in this one as well. And our second TV game of the week, Lebanon visiting Virginia High. Casey, also on the call for this game on Saturday. But this time, we're going to give Steve first pick on the game. Does Steve want the first pick on this game <laughs> is the question. I mean, another, another example, you look at common opponents, and it's almost no difference, particularly those opponents within the district, almost point for point. Lebanon's done a great job with its quarterback, Mike Reese. Virginia High. I have picked them wrong all year long. I picked them to lose, and every time I do, they win. But Lebanon has done me right as well. I think this is a toss-up. I think the, the non-region games, maybe you can decide for a little bit of a difference in favor of the Pioneers. They are on the road as well. All that to say, it's a toss-up, and my toss-up goes to Lebanon. Hunter Norris deserves a round of applause. The coach at Lebanon in his late 20s, first-year head coach, had them at 7-0 and going to the Graham game last week. You mentioned identical scores. Virginia High and Graham both, Virginia High and Lebanon, both lost to Graham 27-14. They both had leads at one point in that game. For this game is basically an elimination for a home playoff game. The loser of this game I don't think has any chance of a home playoff game. And Derek Patterson said he told the Virginia High team that is what is at stake. He wants them to know what is at stake in this game. But I think Lebanon, I like what Coach Norris, I was impressed when I talked with him. I think Lebanon, Mike Reese is an outstanding quarterback. The system they have in there, 
And something that he told me very interesting, they only have one player who starts on both sides of the ball. He's going to do a new thing or he just wants the guys to play one way and it's worked so far. I'm going to take Lebanon on the road. So I got to see Virginia High play last week against Richland, which Richland is not having a good season, especially by Richland's standpoint. So it's not a great measuring stick. But what I noticed about them was Virginia High is Virginia High's worst enemy. They had a ton of penalties in that game. Undisciplined, just like not thinking type penalties, false starts, uh, you know, illegal shifts, those kind of things. If they can get those together, they can absolutely beat left. I'm just not sure if those are the kind of mistakes you fix in a week. And for that reason, I'm joining the crew and I'm picking Lebanon as well. A few bonus picks for you now for our YouTube crowd. Let's start in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Eastside versus Thomas Walker. For Thomas Walker, this is a big game, Casey, because they're trying to get into the playoffs. Yeah, I think they're going to be okay to get in. I think they're fifth in the latest rankings in, in Region 1D, so I think Thomas Walker is going to make it in. If they have won any chance of a home playoff game, they have to beat Eastside. But I, I, we did the Eastside game last week against Twin Springs, who is a very young team, very injured team. But Eastside scored a touchdown every possession they had the ball. Keldon Hamilton, outstanding running back. They got a freshman running back, Rocky Bond, who's a really good player, the freshman quarterback. I think Eastside is rolling right now. I think they get the win at Thomas Walker. Yeah, Thomas Walker rushed for over two, uh, 330 yards last week in its win. But this Eastside defense has only allowed 47 points all season to teams not named Rykov. So that's a pretty good output there for the Spartans. As Casey mentioned, very key in playoff point standings. Eastside can get up maybe to that number two seed. They want another crack at Rye Cove. I think they're going to get it eventually. Thomas Walker will still get in the playoffs, maybe a little bit lower than that fifth spot they are now, but I think Eastside wins this one. Yeah, this is a really big game, as you mentioned, for Eastside because they are battling there with Holson for that number two seed. Uh, great season for Thomas Walker up to this point. Love to see them get in the playoffs, but I'm going to join the group and go with Eastside. Patrick Henry and Honaker. See, this is a huge game for Patrick Henry if they want to get in the playoffs. Yeah, I can't really believe we're, we're saying if Patrick Henry wants to get in the playoffs, but that's where this season has landed. Honaker beat Patrick Henry twice last year. Peyton Music, a huge game last week. Five touchdowns, almost 400 yards through the air. I just think this Honaker offense has really found itself in the last few weeks. Patrick Henry, we talked last week, a little bit hurt by injury. Some of the folks that we thought might not play last week against Holston did. It still lost the game. I'm going to take Honaker as well here. Yeah, this last game, last year we did this game on Friday Night Rivals, an outstanding game. It was a rainy night. Honaker pulled it out. Of course, you know, they first of two wins over them. But I think, I, I think Honaker has gotten a lot better since we did their game against Rye Cove. They beat Chilhowie. They, they beat Holston. And Patrick Henry lost to Holston. Narrows last week, they win a shootout against Narrows. Honeaker's defense, they, they are susceptible to giving up. You wonder if Patrick Henry can just keep play keep away. I think that can keep him in the game for a while, but the Music Brothers, I think, are going to be the difference. Close win by like Honeaker. It's so difficult when you talk about these Class 1 mm -hmm. schools because an injury here or there, even if it's just somebody who's banged up and not 100% healthy, can make all the difference. Patrick Henry, you just don't have enough, a lot of depth. Mm -hmm. And so the way that they're banged up has hurt them a lot this year. I'm going to go with Honaker as well. Let's go back to the Tennessee side for an interesting battle of Greene County rivals. West Green at South Green. Casey, who do you like? I like South Green in this one. You know, West Green, certainly they lost to Hampton big. Then West Ridge, 6A school, they, they lost big there. I think maybe whatever success they had early on, they found a rough patch later in the season. Meanwhile, South Green, they just keep rolling, and they'll set up a big game next week. They have Hampton to finish the regular season, and obviously South Green controls their destiny to win out. They win the region championship. So I think that Hampton is going to give them all they want next week. But we can look ahead, and I know they can't, but I think South Green <laughs> wins comfortably over the Buffaloes. I think this is a game that was rescheduled from one that was postponed earlier, which is why West Green played Westridge last week. South Green's won six straight, only lost that seven-point loss to open the season against David Crockett. Meanwhile, West Green has dropped two straight, albeit one to that big 6A uh, team in Westridge by a combined score of 96 to nothing. West Green's got to win this one if they want to get in the playoffs. I just don't think it's going to happen. South Green, too much offensively. They can throw it, run it, do whatever they want to do offensively. I like South Green. I know West Green has had a lot of injuries throughout the season. They've had uh, uh, some consistency problems, even when they have been healthy. And meanwhile, South Green just kind of keeps chugging along. They keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger every week. I like the Rebels as well. All right, you can get all your scores and highlights for your favorite high school football team on Friday night. 
on Friday night huddle on WCYB. Thanks for joining us on YouTube.